Welcome to Kids Sing tonight. Oh, it's good to see all of you. Glad you're with us. We'll spend just a few minutes before our worship begins, and we, we'll sing some songs together. And, and uh, Hey, Sam. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Good to see all of you. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children, love the Lord. The Lord to Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody, Lord to Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody, get those animals out of the muddy, muddy, children, love the Lord. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children, love the Lord. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the sky is His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Excellent job you're doing tonight. When I was a little child, no higher than your knee, I bought a box of crayons just for me. I picked them up, I opened them up, I looked way down inside. The colors that reminded me of Jesus when he died. Because red is the color of the blood that he shed. Brown is for the crown of thorns they placed upon his head. Blue is for royalty within him did dwell. And yellow's for the Christian who's afraid to tell. Well, I colored and I colored till my crayons were all gone. Now that I'm much older, the memory lingers on. And when I see a little child with crayon box in hand, I'll tell him what it means to me. I hope he understands. Because red is the color of the blood that he shed. Brown is for the crown of thorns they placed upon his head. Blue is for royalty within him did dwell. And yellow's for the Christian who's afraid to tell. And yellow's for the Christian who's afraid to tell. Father. Uh, Jacob had twelve sons. I can name them one by one. You can do like one, two, three if you sing along with me. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, Joseph, Asher, Dan, and Gad, Naphtali, and Benjamin. Let's try that one more time, okay? Father Jacob had twelve sons. I can name them one by one. You two, five, one, two, three, if you sing along with me. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, Joseph, Asher, Dan, and Gad, Naphtali, and Benjamin. We did it. That was good. Jesus called them one by one. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Then came Philip, Thomas, too. Matthew and Bartholomew. James, the one they called the less. Simon, also Thaddeus, the twelfth apostle. Judas made. Jesus was by him betrayed. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. And they all followed him. Matthias then took Judas's place to preach to men of every race. Paul three preaching trips did make and went to Rome for Jesus' sake. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. And they all followed him. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good, when I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, but it makes him very sad. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. He answers prayer, He answers prayer, He answers prayer, He's so good to me. God sent his son, God sent his son, God sent his son, he's so good to me. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see. When my Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Tall mountains, green valleys, the beauty that surrounds me all make me aware of the one who made it all. I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. And nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Green grass and flowers all blooming in springtime are works of the master I live for each day. I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Now never more will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Sing one more song, then we'll have our prayer, and then worship service will begin. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Out of my heart, out of my heart, shine out. Lord Jesus, shine out today, shine out always, shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to each one of us. Thank you, Father, for our families, for all of our precious children. We pray that you will help all of us to strive to teach them your ways. Help us to work together as we already are and on a continual basis to show your love and to teach our children what true success is, and that is living for you. Help all of us, Father, to continue to put you first. 
Help us to make you our first priority. Be with us tonight as we worship you. And may we, by the songs that we sing, really believe them. And may our hearts be stirred up for greater service for you. Be with Adam as he preaches tonight. And may we support him and all the men that stand in the pulpit to proclaim your word. We're grateful for all the abilities of all the members that they have and the talents that you have given them. Father, we just pray that you will use us up in your service. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to uh, Hoover for our evening services tonight. We're thankful that you're here. Um, we'll start with number 167. 167. <clears throat> Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Sing 837. 837. Thank you. 
Let's pray. Lord and Father, um, we come to you, uh, our God, and just we pray that you would help us um, as we go through our daily walk. Help us to realize that we do need you. Um, help us to not get distracted by the things of this world, the things that we encounter on a daily basis um, that tend to shield our eyes and get in our way of seeing how much we truly do need you. Um, just help us to, to focus, Father, to put those things away, at least uh, for a portion of the day, to recognize who you are and who we are and that we are your children, Father, and that we need to be reflections of you um, as we go, go outside our door, Father. And Lord, we thankful for the opportunity to come back uh, before you. We're thankful for the op this opportunity to speak to you in prayer uh, as a congregation, um, to uh, ask for your blessings, and then to praise you for being uh, our God and our Father. Um, Lord, as we continue throughout this worship, we just pray that we will have the focus um, to, again, give you glory and honor, Father, to... Um, recognize you as our as our creator father and worthy of praise um, father we ask that uh, as we uh, get ready to jump into this week um, whether it's going to work or uh, going out in our community going to school that we we would um, put on Christ father as we um, do our day-to-day -day activities that we would be an example of you to those around us that we would um, be kind, be giving, um, have a servant mindset, um, and that we help those that we come in contact with. Um, Lord, we are so very thankful for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Number 911 will be the invitation song after Adam speaks to us tonight. The song before the lesson will be 449. If you'd like to stand uh, as we sing, please do. Number 449.
family of the body, the body of Christ, have continued to be encouraging and pushing, and they have finally seen, seen all their pushing come, come to a head here with me standing before you this evening to be able to speak. So I appreciate it very much and very humble for all the encouragement. With our theme of looking at loving God, loving people, changing the world, being about, being about Christ into the world, the young professional class has been looking at the characteristics, the attributes of Jesus. Several weeks back, we covered a characteristic of being a servant. And I appreciate Donnie's words in the prayer of us being, being Christ in the world, being Christians in the world, being these servants in our daily actions. This evening, I want us to look at what this word servant is really about. I don't know if we really dig in to what this word is and how this word really connects to Jesus, Jesus the servant, but also how it connects into our lives. That's what I want to spend some time this evening looking at. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah 42, starting in verse 1. Please have your Bibles ready to go. If you're not using a Bible, have your, your digital electronic thing ready to go too. We're going to be turning the pages or swiping your finger, whatever, whichever one it may be. But we're going to use it this evening. Isaiah chapter 42, starting in verse 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged. Till he establishes justice on earth, in his law the islands will put their hope. Verse 1, here is my servant. In Matthew chapter 12, we have Jesus saying these words that Isaiah prophesied about, speaking of this Jesus who is going to come, who is going to be the servant of God. So now we need to take this word servant and really see what are we talking about? What are we looking at when we look at the word servant? Servant is used over 1,100 times throughout the Bible. So it's pretty important. But it's not used the same way every time we run across the word. So we need to step back and look at how this word is used. In Exodus chapter 21... We'll be going back from the Old Testament to the New Testament, back and forth, so just have your fingers ready. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 5. Exodus 21, verse 5. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and children and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judges. He shall not take him to the door. He shall then take him to the door or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an awl. Then he will be his servant for life. In this case, servant is dealing with the idea of a slave. Someone working for someone else. In this particular verse passage, we're looking at how a slave of the time, we get stuck with this word slave. American early history and this terrible time period in our history, not so much at the time the Bible is what we're talking about. Was that going on? Yes. But what we're talking about is someone who is not able to take care of themselves, not able to take care of their families. They would go to someone who is rich and say, hey, I want to work for you. They would sign a contract. They would work for them for a number of years. And if they decided, I want to stay with you, they'd have to go to the doorpost and pierce the ear. They would have to choose to be their slave forever, their servant. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. Matthew 10, verse 24. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. A slave above their master, a servant above their master. He ties that in there to the same direction of a student being above their teacher. In this case, again, still referring to this servant filling in a slave position. Just another part of this word servant. Another direction of the word servant is being an attendant. In Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11, verse 28. Being an attendant of someone, being their aid, being their follower. Chapter 11, verse 28 of Numbers. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aid since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. 
we're, we're dealing with that word aid, being a, being a servant of someone. Joshua being the servant to Moses, aiding him where he can, helping out where he can as a servant would do, learning from him, following in his footsteps, knowing Joshua is the next one selected to lead these people of Israel. He's learning everything he can. He is being a servant to Moses. We have in Genesis chapter 19 another direction that we take the word servant. Angels, uh, Genesis chapter 19, we begin to look at the presence of superiors dealing with these angelic beings. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 2. This is Lot speaking, as the angels have come to visit Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot is speaking in verse 2. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's home where you can stay, where you can clean up, where you can have a rest and be able to start the next day. Second half paraphrase. Lot understands his position here. He understands that he is below the angelic beings. He is their servant dealing in this presence of superiors. Another side that servant is used is in addressing God himself. Going to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3. We're dealing with Samuel being called, being summoned in verse 9. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, if God calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel identifying as the servant, as God's servant, as the one to learn from, as the one to follow, as the one to serve. In Psalm chapter 27, Psalm chapter 27, in verse 9, we have David speaking. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. This goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 31, when God tells the people here, hey, in Deuteronomy, if your people don't do what they're supposed to, I'm going to turn from them. And he also says in Deuteronomy here, chapter 31, verse 17, tells them you're going to fall away because you're going to follow these other gods. Here we have David in the psalm saying, hey, I'm your servant. Talking at this same time of the people beginning to question their choices. <coughs> Don't turn away your servant. Don't send me away. Let us stay and be your servant. In Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and verse 29. We have Jesus being taken to the temple as a baby. As would be the custom after so many days after birth being presented to the temple. And we have Simeon who is there worshiping, praising God. In verse 29, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. Simeon is referring to the first half of that verse that I that Simeon was able to see this baby Jesus, to see the Savior in the world. And now he is ready as the servant of God for his life to go in peace, addressing God as the Lord, as the Master. In relation to a king with his people in 1 Kings chapter 12, another part of of how this word servant is used. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 7. Solomon's passing, Rehoboam and Jeroboam being brought up here to see the situation and how things are going to go. Rehoboam is on the throne asking the advisors, the elders that worked with his father, how should I treat these people of Israel? How should I work with them? In verse 7, we have the advisor's reply. If today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. If you, as the king, will serve the people, the people will serve you. 
interesting. Because when we think about kings, we don't normally think that way. Yet if we step back just for a minute and look at our lives with our king, our king that serves us, and we in turn serve him, and how that relationship becomes a circle and how it works. The word servant being used as those faithful to God. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2. Starting in verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. God saying, Moses, my servant, the one who was here, who was doing my will, the one who was serving me. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, we have King Darius making a decree about praying. Daniel choosing to disobey that decree and still finds time to pray throughout the day as he has been doing all along. Finds himself being taken and thrown into the den of lions. King Darius rushes the next morning to the den of lions and in verse 20, chapter 6, verse 20 of Daniel. When he came near the den, this is King Darius, came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually, has he saved you? Has he rescued you from the lions? Daniel, the servant. This king, this person who was not the Israelite lion, did not choose to worship God, to follow God, to serve God, is calling Daniel the servant of God. Calling him that based on his continual service to God. In Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4 and verse 12. Paul wrapping up his letter to Colossians here at the very end of verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends his greetings. This person who you know because he is in your midst, he is one of you, but he's also a servant of Christ Jesus. So we have this image of servant. No, we're not going to cover all over 1,100 verses of servant. We want to cover how it's used in various different ways. Because we take this image of servant and we're okay with it in its little box. Yet there's more to it. And hopefully we've shown that this evening is that servant is used in so many different ways and so many different aspects. It is more than just service to one another. More than just helping one another. It goes beyond that. It goes to the relationship that we have with each other, that we have with employers or employees, relationships with the powers that be, the authorities, the government, but also with the relationship that we have with God himself. We can't stop here. We have to connect Jesus to being the servant that we read about in Isaiah 42 and how Jesus is the servant and what it means for Jesus to be that servant. In John chapter 6, John chapter 6, we have some interesting words from Jesus. John chapter 6 and verse 38. Jesus speaking, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me be a servant, to do that which has been left for me to do here, to do what God has sent me to do. It was never about what Jesus wanted to do. It was about what God had intended for him to do. In Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, Mark 10 and verse 45, I'm still in Luke. I'm going to go one more book. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Jesus speaking again, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus' point was to 
serve. He was the teacher. He was the top. Yet he came to serve. He came to be at the bottom. He came to show us how to live. To be about God's will. To be about service. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We see a little bit more from this Jesus and his intentions. Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 6. Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Not his plan, not what he wanted. God's will. God's plan. He was the servant sent here to do God's will. Sent here not to be served, but to serve, to show us how to live. Becoming a servant fully, even to death on a cross. If we jump back a couple of verses in Philippians chapter 2, going back to verse 4. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Fits very well with servant. Looking towards each other, to help each other out, to benefit one another. Verse 5, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. This is where we begin the rubber hitting the road. It's no longer a nice box of servant that has grown a little bit. It's no longer servant attached to Jesus, this person that was here on the earth who lived for us to show us how to live and died and is waiting to come back. It's no longer this pretty bundle that we have. It now becomes application because our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Our attitudes should be that of being a servant. As Donnie said in our daily lives, being servants, looking for those opportunities to help others, to be that light for God. I've been at the camps, been at the youth camps, that have been teaching this idea of being a servant. And we like to jump to John chapter 13, where Jesus is washing the feet of the disciples. We set the kids up in chairs across from each other. We put the wash basins between the kids, and we say, hey, you're going to wash each other's feet. Because this is an act of being a servant. That's easy. Because you know that person. Because you've been at the camp for how many, however many days it's been. You've been taught the same things. You're coming from a similar background. You also know that person's probably had a shower the morning or the day before, hopefully. So that's easy. It's easy to wash their feet. We put ourselves in the grocery store. After a hard days of work, we're tired, we're worn out. We have our cart, 15, 20 items, we're ready to check out. I'm there with you. You want to get out of the store as fast as possible. You see the person behind you with two items. It's easy to let them go in front of you. Five items, we're okay with that. Ten items, we're saying okay, our minds are saying something else, but we still let them go. Again, this is easy. This is the easy part, and we like the easy part. We're okay with Jesus being born. We're okay with the way Jesus lived on the earth. We're okay even with his death. It's easy. It's the easy part. It becomes difficult when you see the mother with a cart full. Baby in one hand, two kids running around the cart. She's trying to keep them from running into people. The difficult part is saying, please go in front. Please let me help you check out. That's difficult. It's easy to wash those feet of the people you know. It's difficult to wash the feet of the person standing at the corner. Because they're not wearing socks and shoes. We don't know the last time their feet were washed. They have the bruises. They have the blisters. They have the open cuts. It's difficult to wash those feet. Jesus didn't stop at the easy. John chapter 13. Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. 
after Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, they sit down at the table for the meal. Throughout this meal, Jesus proclaims he's going to die. He proclaims that someone at the table is going to betray him. He takes that bread and he says, whoever dips it in the bowl with me is the one who will betray me. Judas is at the table, dipping that bread in the same bowl at the same time as Jesus. When Jesus washes the feet of the disciples, he also washes Judas' feet. I know we get stuck on Peter. Wash all of them. But Judas is there. The man that Jesus knows is going to betray him. Judas knows in his heart what he has already decided to do. We find that out a little bit later as Jesus sends Judas out. But he washes his feet. How difficult to wash those feet. Maybe he shrugged a little bit harder. I'd have to say no. Probably washed them with the same care and tenderness he washed the other 11. Because Jesus was being a servant. How about at the arrest? Easy, right? Being arrested. What about the humility that comes with that? The embarrassment that comes from being arrested. Being on trial before numerous courts. Knowing you're innocent, yet standing there not saying a word to defend yourself. Easy, right? Being turned over to the soldiers. To be beaten. To have thorns pushed into your head. To be mocked. To have your body physically torn to have the instrument of your death placed upon you and told you to lead it to the streets. To be nailed, to be lifted up. To have insults hurled at you by the passerbys, which would have been the custom of the days. To hurl insults at the criminals. Easy, right? What about the temptation on the cross? Come on down. Show us who you are. Let us believe that you're the Son of God. Let us see your power. We know in Matthew 26, Jesus prays three times. Verse 39, 42, and 44, paraphrased, I don't want to do this. If there's any other way to do this, let it be done. The last words are key. But not my will, but yours. Not easy to know where things are going and to still be the servant. Because through his entire life, he has shown us how to live, how to be the servants that God requires us to be. In our songbooks, number 694, the words to this song Lord, make me a servant. Lord, make me like you. For you are a servant, make me one too. Lord, make me a servant, do what you must do. To make me a servant, Lord, make me like you. Is that our prayer? Is that our request? Is that how we are living our lives, looking for those opportunities to be a servant, to be the same servant that was sent to the earth that we read about in Isaiah 42, to be that servant of God, to be one who looks to serve and not to be served. Many of us in here have already made that choice, to put on his name in baptism, to walk around the earth as Christians, as little Christ. And to be his servant, to be the light into the world. We're human. We don't always get it right. We have grace. And it pours over us continually. But we've also been told that when we have those struggles, when we have those mess-ups, to tell each other. To go to God to make it right and to have the encouragement and the prayers of the family to help lift that individual up. There will be an opportunity shortly take advantage of that, to be able to come forward and to be able to say, I've messed up, and this is what I'm struggling with, and I need the encouragement. The sad part, though, is that there are some here this evening who have not made that choice. They 
they've chosen to be servants, or they've chosen to be a servant of the world and not of God. Nothing stopping you. All you have to do is come forward and confess. To step into that watery grave of baptism, to be baptized, to rise again, to walk in new life as Christ did, to be washed in his blood, to be seen as clean, to begin walking that life as a servant, the same servant that Jesus showed us how to be through his life. The invitation is not mine. It's not Hoover's. It's God's. Day or night, it doesn't matter. We're not guaranteed the next five minutes. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Why do you wait? If there's a need this evening of either one, please come forward as we stand and as we sing. again we are mindful of your son and as we drink this fruit of the vine please help us to think of the blood that he shed on the cross for us in jesus name we pray amen
so blessed. You bless us so so much, both spiritually and materially. Father, at this time we have an opportunity to give back to further your kingdom. We pray that, that those who give give back cheerfully and and prepare themselves to, to humble themselves and be a servant to you. Father, we pray that those funds that are given will be uh, used according to your will. As through Christ we pray these things. Amen. great day. Thank uh, those of you who have been here. Thank you to uh, Bill and uh, to Adam for great jobs on the lessons uh, both times today. We really appreciate that and I know that we've been blessed uh, to, to be here and a part of it. Let's stand and sing the first verse of 288 and then we'll have our closing prayer. <clears throat> Fairest Lord Jesus Please tell Mr. Chuck as he um, as he gets well soon. Please help him to bring back the powerful lessons that he has always been bringing to us. Please help us as we partake um, depart in our separate ways. Please help the school year to go well. Uh, please help this new year in general to go well. And in Jesus' name. 